standards. Good evening and welcome again to League Football Action. Today in hot, steamy conditions, 31,000 fans saw the preliminary final between Norwood and Glenelg. The match was tight early, with the Redlegs gaining just a slight ascendancy. They led by 18 points at the first break and 9 at the second, and we joined the match early in the third term. Find the boundary line. So the Tigers into attack for the first time this quarter. No change to the half-time scores. It's still the Redlegs by a goal and a half. The breeze has stiffened. It favours the Bays. Just specks of rain start to fall. Seabones there with Hall. McDermott from behind. Woodlands, he chips it in towards the goal square, hauled from behind, off hands, off two red legs hands, the last of them Ross, minor score Tiger. Good coverage by the last line of defence, Norwood equal and forcing through. Darkening, rather eer eerie feeling here at Football Park, both in the crowd and the weather closing in. It's McNeil, still in the back pocket. Forced to go for distance. Gets up to the centre wing area. Big Hall up is over there. Cruz couldn't spoil it. And John Hall's mark. Too much height. A bit too strong. The high ball from Hall, half forward. Murphy spoiling well as he has all day. And another throw in just ahead of centre wing on Nord's attacking zone. Neither side able to break clear, such is the defence. The Rovers, the followers, the Ruckman, all playing close. Barn bundled out of the way by Carey. Might get a free kick for that one. And he will take that kick from the centre wing position. Carey is getting into the back there of Barn and pushing him off balance. He fires a high kick through the half forward line. Ah, oh, Murphy! Great defender for Glenelg. He'll go the distance. Kernahan's created space. Alan Stringer tries to do likewise. Kernahan chips up, gives him a run at the ball. Woodland's there, backing up Murdoch, runs it to the line. And it's a throw in inside half forward, right for Glenelg. Feature of both wingmen for Glenelg, Kernahan and Hewitt, has been their kicking two positions. Played five and a half minutes of the second half. It's still the Red Leagues in front by eight points. Oh, loose ball. Richardson had to work hard. Fosdyke on the end of it. From centre wing, he chips over towards Barm at half forward. Had to stretch. Murphy with him. Twisting and turning. Gets onto his left foot. Finds McDermott. Kind of having to go back. As McDermott sends it in towards Salisbury. What about giving it off by hand, decided to kick down towards half forward, Kidney got up high, going through his Winton, but John Hall's there, got the hand pass out to Warhurst, he changes the direction of play, McNeil, that's to get around Marshall now, oh, not sure where to go, now gave it off by hand to Lester Ross. Duck of the target, but Grenville, who is playing another good game, played so well last week, sends it out wide to Kernahan. By hand. Nicely done to McDermott. High towards half four. John Hall's back there again. Off hands all through the legs of Murdoch. Danger. Winton. And there have been a few chances that have gone begging throughout this match. That was one of them. 11 scoring shots to 14. Glenelg lead on shots, but trail on points. Hellyer gaining distance, firing it long. McNeil over the top of Carey. Play on the call, loose one with Kernahan. Rush the defender aside, hooks it high. The back, Maynard running through. Couldn't get clear, nor would get the numbers. Fosdyke in over the top. It's a bounce inside half forward for Glenelg. Peter Maynard just not able to break clear today. Lost that touch of form that he showed certainly in the middle of the season. Seven and a half minute mark. The half back line. Trapping the ball. Tapping it back to Carey. Here's a chance. Within again. Chips to the square. 
The ball sitting nicely. Seabarn hops. It's online. No, it's not. It's off. One point only. And Flamel trail by six points. Individual efforts up front. Three opportunities for John Seabarn. And he shot. He's only kicked two goals from six scoring shots. Kernahan, not quite. McNeil, too high. So David Kernahan looking to complete a big weekend for the family. After Stephen's success yesterday, finds Winton now, just in front of the scoreboard that sees Glenelg 3 12, trailing Norwood 5 6. 15 scoring shots to 11. The Bay's behind, though, by a goal. Now Winton a long way out. Going to take the perfect kick. The breeze at his back. Not a bad looking kick, but not quite. No, not quite. Gave it everything. Glenelg 313. Reminiscent of Port Adelaide last week. Winton, a busy player, lots of touches, but just lacking the little bit of finesse in his skills to finish off the job. Four points this term to Glenelg so far. Hellier goes straight downfield looking for Fosdyke. Carey set. Fosdyke had the front spot. It's worked back to Alan Stringer. Got it through to Carey. Wide and still McDermott. Short pass. Hewitt. And Glenelg doing everything precisely. And showing the confidence to persist in a style that has won for them in the past. Mark Hewitt is directly in front of goal. Only 45 metres out. He's got the uh, accuracy, also the distance, and his first goal puts Glenelg in front for the first time of the game at the nine and a half minute mark, third turn. Control of the ball, carry high, almost the ground. Winter, back to Alan Stringer who slipped, strength forward. Out to McDermott who set it up for Mark Hewitt. And that's four goals to one to Nord in the first. And since that time, four to one to Glenelg. Sid doing everything to lift the red legs. Maynard got it down only as far as Marshall. Now Peter Maynard boots the Tigers forward. Alan Stringer the chance. Oh, did it brilliantly, but then caught by Warhurst. Stringer calling for the three, but it's play on as Kernahan goes long. It's an open goal quick. Kelly is back there. Woodland! at the back of the pack read it best and David Kernahan Alan Stringer lift the bay Stringer getting vital touches at centre half forward Brendan Maynard and Ruck for Norwood Carey's tap away McDermott sends it wide to Kernahan they're on the march this time held up by Waters he puts it long not a well directed kick should go to Wayne Stringer, stood his ground well. Kernahan around McNeil, drives into the centre half forward spot. Brendan Maynard sits and takes the ball. At centre half back, we'll get the help of a 15 metre penalty. Drives it wide looking for Ducker, but he's well downfield with no help. Murdoch running hard but can't make it. Hooked around nicely, Rowe trying to get the run of the ball, gets past Carey, who got the hand to it. Stopped it. Rowe looking for the free kick, not on. Fosdyke goes and finally it's paid to Rowe. He's got no one to kick to, drives in looking for Hall. It's well dispatched, but the big fella couldn't get down. McDermott really lifted this quarter. Wayne Stringer off the half back line. Past the centre circle. Plenty of time to look. Drives long, direct to the square. Hellier and Seymour! Take. Uh, two goals to Seabone so far as Tanner lifts to the interchange bench. Seabone puts his stern on the board, and that's the furthest corner for Glenelg. Final goal, 12 and a half minutes past their 13 points clear. 
You can feel the crowd lift as Wayne Strigger came down through the midfield. Plenty of time, several bounces. One out with Seabone against Tellier. And what control. And if that passage of play doesn't lift the bays, nothing will. A sensational run by Wayne Stringer. And while that was happening, Wayne Tanner was down on the other side. Now he's off with a leg injury. So Carey in there. The bays have lifted. They're out now by 13 points and they go forward again. Held up by Maynard. No, through goes Stringer. Down goes Murdoch. What an inspirational five-minute spell of football this is by Glenelg. Three good goals coming at the nine and a half, ten and a half, and twelve and a half minutes. They're at ten and a half forward now. Carey knocks them forward again. The hand pass slipped out. Kick forward from McNeil. The half forward. The Red Legs need a couple of quick goals. Connolly, who's come on, slips it out to Ducker. Long towards Hall. That just cleared the pack. Not quite. Hit the post. And Connolly down and apparently in trouble, real trouble, it's in a half forward. He's obviously really in trouble with his breathing. Meanwhile, it's Hewitt, Glenelg, through half forward, Waters to one-hander. The Norwood's not with numbers now, drive up looking for Ducker at the back at Salisbury, out of his reach, Bosdark's got through, tackle from behind, and the free kick goes to Hewitt. There's a stretcher case for Connolly, who is in awful trouble behind play. Murphy's kicked deep to the pocket, and a big spoil over the top by Rowan Hellier. The throw in 40 metres from the behind post. And Stephen Connolly on the ground for less than 30 seconds is down and out, well attended. The game will stop whilst the stretcher takes Stephen Connolly from the field. He crashed pretty heavily and he did seem to have trouble with his breathing. It makes you wonder if perhaps he's damaged some ribs coming down because he was really puffing and panting pretty badly. Now number 33 Tanner came off just a moment ago to allow Connolly to go on and he, he came off limping so he had a few problems and it looks like Clavey will perhaps get his first run. He's doing the stretching exercises as Connolly has stretched it off. So that really is a body blow for not only Stephen Connolly, but the Red Leagues with effectively two injured players. And Glenelg's run stopped by an accident. Lord attempting to fight back, but the impetus, the momentum that Glenelg had may or may not be maintained. Stephen Connolly. He looks to be in quite a deal of pain. Yeah. Ribs, logical thing, but he certainly looked to be concussed as well. I'd suggest there was no movement. But the game about to restart. Right forward pocket for Bledel. Maynard getting a hand to ball. McDermott, possession, stolen by McIntosh. Not quite. Marshall did likewise. Woodlands. So the ball beginning to fall right for Bledel. A lucky kicks around the corner, a loving on the chest. Craig Woodlands within distance. Known as a goal kicker of renown. And that one looks good. That's number two in the corner. So for Melbourne, with their fourth goal so far this term, break to an 18-point lead. Four goals within seven minutes in Glenelg. Well ahead, a lot of enthusiasm shown. Have been attacking off that half-back line, kicking to position. And Marshall's lucky snap to the centre found his half-board flanker. Not an inch given in the first half. It was tight football, it was tough football. The, the Tigers had an all-important run on as they go forward again. Through went Warhurst for the Red Leagues. Down goes Murphy. Over the top, McIntosh. Murphy was pushed. He wants to send them forward again. There's plenty of run, plenty of momentum, and Woodlands, who's kicked two in this big spell. They 
six and a half forwards. It wasn't a good pass. He's put it out in front of Maynard. He goes over the top. Danger. The tackle applied by Brendan Maynard. And that's holding the ball. Going against Kidney. Graham Corns. He's got a, plenty of frowns there, but I think he'd be pretty happy with the way things have gone in the last ten minutes. Murphy! Oh, this game has come alive. Or at least the Bays have come alive. A beauty. One-hander. Barn and Carey. Carey says, off you go. On your horse. 15 metre penalty. Makes him down to between wing and right half forward. Too far out to score for the centre half back. Goes out in towards Seabone, who's in the middle of three red legs. Grenville to Carey. Long. Won't have the distance. Back there. Red leg mark taken by Hellyer. In fact, it's Rodney Maynard right in the square. Looking to play on quickly, finds brother Brendan in the back pocket. Comes up to the half-back line, kicks long, centre wing. The cross was McDonough, hands Marshall, the ball beginning to bounce for Glenelg. McDermott playing a boomer quarter, drives deep, kidney set, scan for the mark for kidney. Stood his ground courageously. McDermott, the ball to space. Scanlon should have fisted online, went for the swipe, but timing was important. Robert Kidney kicks his first goal at the 19 and a half minute mark. And Glenelg opened up a big break of 24 points. Five goals to nil. David Marshall fired it off to Chris McDermott. Plenty of time to lift the eyes, place the ball to space. Kidney sat in the squat. Scanlon across the face with that arm, little risk of hitting the ball. 61 plays, 37. Still only at the 20 minute mark of the third term, but in this big crowd, uh, the Tiger fans I think can sense another grand final. Warhurst trying to lift the red legs. They trail by four, but not out of it yet by any means. Maynard, Richardson, the loose ball. The hand pass away. Barn forced to stretch, but taken by Alan Stringer. High. Right across got Crown. Bozine. Little chip towards McIntosh on the wing. Can keep going and does. Oh, has to get around Kidney. Goes close to the boundary line. Pains the target. But a little bit wide. Yep. Bit of relief shown there. Wow. We needed that last 10 minutes. In there, Carey and Balm again. Carey wins it only as far as Richardson goes around the corner. H. Had the road interrupted, though. Through goes Murphy into a pack. Spills back to Cruz. Richardson, another opportunity. Needs a good bounce, couldn't get one. And Salisbury. Towards the wing. Alan Stringer's back there. Warhurst got up high. John Hall met heavily by Stringer. Wings and runs straight into one by Gordon, but finds Hall. Oh, now that was well done by Jeff Winton. He ran straight into the man in white. Must have put him off, but he disposed of it beautifully. But the play was won by Alan Stringer's courage in fronting up the largest man on the field in John Hall. Straight in front is Tony Hall. Has kicked one. And he starts to hammer away. Now it's the Tigers out by five goals. The fire of the Bays. Mark Hewitt, one possession on the half-back line. Scotty Salisbury. And now what Gallon Stringer as he fronts John Hall. Front on. The little man won. The play was set up by Winton to Tony Hall, and the Bays have kicked six. Six goals for, in fact, to one point by Norwood at the 22-minute mark of this third term. Hall back in ruck. Glenelg have been getting the ball out of the centre with repeated monotony. Wide it goes. McNeil leads Kernahan. Wants some help. Set up Maynard. He wants help. Stolen by... Uh, McDermott, not quite. Maynard, Hall, 
Warhurst, Richardson should go to Fosdyke. He does from centre wing. Having a look, driving wide, looking for Ace back there. All for Mel, and West takes the mark. Jim West, the milk have lifted, confidence sky high, Marshall sets, Richardson, well done Fosdyke, back to McIntosh, Crossfield he's got Rowe loose, he should take off, there's a Glenelg defender coming, Rowe settles, long, direct, online, Stephen Rowe, goal number three, and perhaps that's what Norwood needed to get back in this game, they trail by 24 points, McIntosh, the player, Found row midfield. How did the rover get clear? But Durlock came from metres. Row on line. Redbeck's first goal since the 22 minute mark of the second quarter. But let's not underestimate the Redbeck's. No, they trail by four goals, but there's a long way to go in this football match. And they will have the use of the breeze in the last quarter. Through goes Winton. Mid-air shot from Marshall. Kernahan leading the race on centre wing. McNeil, though, got the good bounce. Goes up towards half forward. Salisbury goes down. Rowe, the loose ball again. He can run at it. Decides to go to Barr. Barr settles. Pops at them. Not quite. Across the face. Minor score. Red legs, but importantly, they're getting the ball onto their forward line over the last couple of minutes. The blistering pace of McNeil, the run of Rowe, setting up the chance. A high screw punt kick from Cruz. Working at the back, Murphy, been a big defender. Floats one into the centre half back spot. Wyndon Ducker trying to get clear, works it off. Straight to Clavey. He steadies. The kick's on line. Brenton Clavey, goal number one, number seven for Glenelgan, for Norwood, and they trail by 17 points. What a quarter of football. James West could not take Mark Duck at the pace, just got it clear. The overlap from Brenton Clavey. Online, direct, and Norwood back with two. Neil Barr must be just a little bit happier, but... David Kernahan not so happy. He's just gone off for the base, replaced by Donovan. Ball got it down. Marshall trying to pick it up. But Rowe breaks away again. Some important touches for him. The bounce is good. Open goal for Ducker. Almost red legs. Three goals in two and a half minutes. But Ducker gets his third. And the margin's back to 11 points. Inside his opponent with ease. 11 points separating the side. Liddell hitting the front for the first time at the nine and a half minute mark of this quarter. We're riding high. Ball step away again. Barr trying to work through. Forcing it stolen by Hewitt. Dribbles it back only as far as McIntosh. Oh, straight to Big Carey. Well smothered pain. Barr trying to work through. Stolen Marshall. Clever play, wins them the kick, and Glenelg forward once more. Back there, Scanlon, oh! Scanlon struck, Rose struck then. Scanlon it is, but it's Maynard's mark. Dropping back, Pearl's position well, red is first. And what a game. Clear mark overhead to Peter Maynard. He's goalless at the stage, but certainly able to do something from this position the distance shouldn't uh, worry him he's virtually straight in front and he's hooked the kick and won't make the distance forcing the ball forward his bounce beats kidney Foster there over the top Warhurst a big kick to the center wing area Grenville and H the bounce beating Grenville he's got the help of Hewitt but the white line's the winner throw in interchange gate center wing and call looking at the scoreboard sitting on an 11 point lead the Tigers have kicked six goals to three in this quarter what a great quarter of Australian football it's been 
Nine points down the base at half time. Now up by 11 after leading by five goals just five minutes ago. McNeil, in fact, it's Ross in centre wing. The half forward going back. There's Murphy coming out to meet him, though. Brilliantly done, Brendan Maynard. He turned on the strictly bit. Good attacking defensive work by West. Still the chance for McNeil. Had to break away from Donovan. Loose ball on centre wing. Off the ground's the best bet. Rodney Maynard. Paul in pursuit. He goes by hand to McNeil. A fumble. But he got the hand pass away. Pressure. And it went across the line. Unbelievable intensity. Three soccer's to cover the ball and take it wide. McDermott, the worker. Great game, 28 minute mark, the concern of Barr, Norwood into attack, Donovan the tackle, and another bounce inside half forward for Norwood. Tight first half, only eight goals and suddenly the game is a fire. Concerned the physiotherapist called by Barr, no doubt checking on Tanner, Carey's tap away, but they've almost out Macintosh with force, Richardson's kick. Deep to the pocket, Brendan Maynard looking for help. Back in field he goes looking for Ducker. Brilliant smother Salisbury. Over the top goes Murphy. Ducker back in and it's another bounce. Desperation stuff. What magnificent football. Tanner, he's the area of concern on the red leg bench. Came off this quarter. Magnificent smother. McDermott has another chance. A big kick out of defence. McIntosh at the back. Hall there to help him out. Keeps it in play. Jump. McIntosh, but over the top was Stringer. A free kick could go to Marshall, it was. And a free kick goes to McIntosh. Just ahead of centre wing. The Glenelg supporters not impressed. Mark McIntosh in field. Justin Scanlon down deep. Time running out in this third quarter. A high ball. Knocked away from Maynard, goes to McDermott, smothered by Barr, Clavey, fumbles, gets it out the back, paying now towards goal, and has missed. Norwood trail by 10 points at the 30 minute mark. The pace of pain around the corner as Carey finds James West. There could be a couple of minutes left in this quarter as they lost time when Connolly was taken off and there have been nine goals kicked. So a chance for the Red Leagues to close the gap even further. But there goes Winton driving the base forward by hand. Now it's out of play. Well, they quickly took the ball from full back up towards right half forward. And the crowd on the edge of their seats. It should be a great last quarter. If it's anything like the third. Scanlon got it away. Grenville on all fours. Aces there. Got it out to Richardson. Back it goes to Bosdyke and they work it clear. Towards Barn on the wing. Murphy behind. Murphy with the recovery. Well done out to McDermott. Back it goes to the big fellow Carey. And in towards half forward. Hall in front. The spoilers are there. McIntosh. Loose ball. First to it though, McNeil. Goes to McIntosh. Does well, got the kick away. Now the chance for Rowe. Marshall slowing it down. He goes out wide. Going downfield, there are two of them. Rodney Maynard, well taken. He had Helia there as well. Now he's too far out to score. Oh, brilliant smother again by Salisbury. Murdoch, all the defenders are there for the Red Legs. In attack. Goes down towards the high flyer in Balm out towards the boundary line. Hall's there. Across the line. Three quarter time, so that late surge has been foiled. What a quarter of football. The Bays lead by 10 points, 9-13 to 8-9. Six goals to three by Glenelg in the third term. See them lead by 10 points. Starting the final term of this preliminary final at Football Park. Fosdyke, the quick kick forward. Grenville's got the run of it. Well trapped. Nicely to Murphy. He's been a big defender all day. A high kick to the half forward area going to space. Back goes Alan Stringer's played well at centre half forward since half time. His kick goes through half forward. Paul up there. Recovering well. 
throws the ball out, it's allowed to go. And the umpire finally in for a bounce in the right forward pocket for Brunel. The early minutes of the final quarter, absolutely essential for both sides. Ruck work being done by Hall. Slips it over the top. Marshall goes into the space behind half forward. Donovan up in the forward area. Trying to work through Murdoch. Did it well, but Hellier slips at the crucial moment. Lord Donovan puts Murdoch up to the car with the loose one with Wyndham. And he's gone. Well, luck is the fortune. Wyndham gets his first. And that's a steady at Buckingham with a 16 point lead. The pressure was on. Murdoch attempting. Hellier to smother. Maynard out to Winton. Pace and balance through the forward line into the square. Great goal, Jeffrey Winton. The ticket to the grand final is resting on the result of this match. The winner to play North Adelaide. And at the moment, it's the Bays with the advantage. 16 points. Carey drives them forward again. Four. Being held. And Tony Hall with a free kick within scoring distance. Just about on the edge, but he'd be 50 metres out. He's a good kick of the football. He's kicked two. Perhaps not quite the distance. The Red League defenders desperate. Waiting for it. This big John Hall. There will be a bounce almost in the goal square. Tigers into attack. Leading 73 to 57. Seabohm and Hellyer, the 31 and 16 respectively. Loose ball, Kidney brought down, penalised, holding the ball. Good tackle applied by Scanlon. Off by hand, McIntosh. The man who polled more votes than anyone else in the Gary Medal this year, Ross. Back would have set a half back. Sends it out towards McNeil on the wing. Donovan goes up for Glenelg. Got two grabs. Goes down. Pushed in the back. Well, being held, he wants. Donovan with a free kick. Don't drive the base forward. They've started this last quarter better than Norwood. He goes in short. Looking for Hall again. Off hands. At the back. No one can pick it up. Maynard tries to push it out. It goes out to Rodney Maynard. And now H, who runs it through the centre of the ground. Got to be quick. Winton gets him. Alan Stringer intercepting. Still the chance for the Red Legs. This is Clavey. Got the hand pass off nicely to McNeil. He's at right half forward with pace. Goes in towards Rowe. Yes! Two bites from the cherry. And he took it. McNeil's pace again. The chance to set up the movement. Salisbury caught under the ball, went back with one hand, the ball just over the top. And Stephen Rowe, who lifted the red legs in the third quarter, has done it again. He's kicked one goal in each quarter so far. He needs one in the last now to give the red legs a run again. So four goals to Rowe. The margin back to ten points. What the preliminary final with up for 87. The ability to run and power through half forward has been his great attribute. Despite Jeff Winton's desperate attempts to keep the ball trapped across half back. Redneck burst through with the pace of McNeil. And Norwood wanting to lift the work in the center area. Oh, the player getting handed the ball, it goes Norwich way, but the bounce is out to Hewitt, who couldn't control it. Clavey gets in there, trying to force forward. They've gained a few metres, it's almost to the front white line of the square. Big John Hall has had a big, big influence on the game as the Bay trainers go to work on David Kernahan. He left the ground in the third term. Maynard lifting this final quarter, Murphy sending it wide to half forward. Maynard versus Hall. Clever play, Hall bad luck, but got it clear. Alan Stringer elusive. Trying to work, gets it to Donovan. Not quite, but it stays inside. Ross working to the line. And a throw in inside half forward for Glenelg. Stringer's done well at centre half forward. Added a lot of strength and power and poise. 
The wind threatening the turn as it's gone across the ground now in this final turn. Scanlon against the tight Wayne Stringer, backs the judgment, it pays off. Drives through half forward, puts it high and wide. Seabone's there, so too heavy of a spoil. Woodland, Seabone, back for Woodlands. Murdoch needs to get over. Seabone in Bill, got him, hit it. Good ball for Charles Lanell. Woodland set himself in front of the pack. The pressure from Hellier was great. Now set up for Mark Hewitt. 45 degree angle, about a 40 metre kick. He has one. Kicked in the third term. It's a high one, it looks online. Oh, another steady goal for Brunel. They regain a 16 point lead at the six minute mark. Woodland burst through, could not get the ball to Wood to Sebo clearly. Woodland's pace and endeavour. Back to Sebo, setting up the pass. And the player who's perhaps been a surprise in the second half of the season in Mark Hewitt has kicked well. Rain starting to fall at Football Park. The crowd's been pretty lucky throughout, but now at the seven-minute mark of the last turn, it's starting to drizzle. The bay forward again, Woodlands. Oh, this looks like the run they got out of the third quarter before Norwood came back. McDermott. Hewitt, who just kicked a goal, had a part in those early goals by the Bay in the third term. McDermott goes long, Seabone in front, knocked off hands, Murdoch. Waiting back there is Hewitt again, knocks it away from Fosdyke, close to the boundary, Seabone over the top, grabbed by Murdoch again. Umpire Thorpe decides to bounce it. Yes, the brolly's up, but still the short sleeves. Warm, humid conditions here at Football Park. Even warmer out there in the middle. Ball. Both the halls, in fact. The Norwood man got it down. Scanlon. Out to Rodney Maynard. Now Rowe. Out to Fosdyke. Four possessions and they work it clear. Murphy's underneath it for the Bays. Been a good performance by Murphy today. Indeed, right throughout the finals. Another good mark on centre wing. The ball sent down the direction of McDermott. Springer saying he was pushed. It's across the line for a boundary throw in. Michael Murphy, best for Glenelg get a great preliminary final. Holding fourth at centre half back. All front spot. Working hard, Maynard. He's lifted since half time. And another stalemate. Close quarters. Winds swirling across the ground. Rain starting to fall. Could it be the Luck has vacated Norwood. Ross across to McIntosh. In trouble, kept it in play well. Lester Ross again. The high ball centre wing. Maynard one hand at the back. Salisbury working through. He has to be penalised, but play on it goes. Payne. Wayne Stringer taps it forward. Marshall feeds Murphy. Clever reflex football. Out comes uh, Sebo. Infield he goes. Donovan fluffs it. McDermott. Well 
smothered Marshall. Donovan gets it out. Clavey fumbles, so Peter's Tanner. In goes Murphy. What a game he's played. Richardson left it behind. McDermott to Murphy. Murphy looking for in the pocket. Gibbs, who's fresh under the ground. He's well followed. But got it over for Seba. For the goal. Secret instructions are. Marshall, Alan Stringer. Another bounce at half forward. Still getting the message through. Must have been a long one. Ball. Farm getting hand two ball. Rodney Maynard on the bottom of the pack. Hewitt applied a, a high tackle. And it will be a free kick to Rodney Maynard. Run seems to have gone out of the red leg side. Fosdyke to Rowe. Tanner. Tanner carrying an injury. Comes across field. Richardson through half forward. In trouble. Got it off. Salisbury got the boot to ball. Out it goes to Hewitt. And Bonnell on the run again. Up to the half forward area. Alan Stringer helps it on its way. Hall trying to work through. And a throw in now inside half forward. And Scott Salisbury. Perhaps a lucky inclusion at the side has fought himself back into form and ready for the big one next week. Inside half forward for Connell. McDermott up late. Murdoch couldn't get through. Comes back in over the top, left the ball behind. And now it's a bounce. Still at half forward for Connell. Connell supporters quite happy with the current situation. Barm. Down to Murdoch. Throws it out loose. Marshall taps it into his own pass. 
trying to work through. McIntosh covered him. Free kick played against Rodney Maynard. Down in the right forward pocket. It'll be Peter Maynard to take the kick from a very acute angle. Now the player who's listed, both he and McDermott, down in form or touch, worked hard in the second half. Peter Maynard, goalless at this stage. Very acute angle, not the better side for a right foot disposal. It looked pretty good. Magic in fact. And it's all going right for Burrell. Goal number 15 and a 34 point lead. They worked hard. Marshall covered him at the back, forced it forward. Maynard was over the top. And the perfect kick from the boundary and a big grip. Yeah, they're kicking them from everywhere, the Bays. 103 plays 63. Ruckman to it again, Carey. Aish couldn't take it. McDermott, Brinbold got it out. Wind and further on, they go forward again. Donovan Long, that could almost have the carry. Not quite. Brendan Maynard. Ross there to support him. Close to the line, still in play though. Now Murdoch, infield he goes. Oh, the fumble from Scanlon. It was being held. Justin Scanlon picks up a three, almost a ten and a half back. Ross gives trailing. Goes in short, finds Murdoch. But his hands full today. Warhurst. Oh, that great smother again. Luckily, though, it spills out the bar. Now McIntosh, he says, go out of the way. Going long, and while he was doing that, a brilliant tackle applied again. A lot of beauty as McDermott sent it forward. Maynard, top tackle by Winton. He really is outstanding in that department of the game. Now Gibbs, right in the forward pocket. A number of times in this quarter, Winton has been the player who's applied the pressure. Gibbs spent most of the time on the interchange bench, looks for a goal to find one. <laughs> they are bolting. Still no smile from the coach, but I'm sure he will later. And Winton trapping. McIntosh on his blind side. McDermott fired the ball wide. Maynard stood his ground, set it up for Roscoe Gibbs. And a precise kick as you'll ever see. And by that stage, it was all over. A magic second half by the Tigers, kicking 13 goals to four and winning by 46 points. For Glenelg, Seaboam kicked four goals, Woodlands three, and for Norwood, Rowe kicked four goals and Ducker three. So the Tigers into another grand final and with a chance to make it a hat trick of premiership. Let's uh, now hear from their coach, Graham Corns, who's speaking with Jerry. Smiling, Graham Corns, and well done. Three times now in a row for a grand final after a tremendous last half today. Well, it was a good last half, and it, as I said, nor to their credit, uh, we were very competitive early, and it took us a while to shake them free, but once we got our, our free-flowing game moving, and once we started using the ball properly, it made the game a little bit easier. It looked to be a good toss to win, yet you were down 18 points at the first change and it took you until a nine and a half minute mark of the third quarter to get in front. Well, the weather forecast suggested it was a good toss to win because it was going to turn around, but that happened once to us in a preliminary final with Nor Norwood once before where we kicked the win for three quarters. It would be too much to expect it to happen again. But strangely enough, both teams scored well into the breeze in the first half. Well, it was 1981 and I think the breeze did give you a little bit of favour in the last quarter, but nevertheless, um, the, it was your back play, play that kept you in the play up in the first half. Our defensive players all year have been superb. There's no doubt about that. They, I think they, there was only one other team that had less points kicked against it than we did. And they've just gone on with it. They really have been tight, United. How difficult, Graham, was it for you to bring the team out of a roll from games 9 to 14 when they're really travelling on a high for a letdown and then to get them back up as you have now? Well, you know, we were played very well in those games, as you know, and you can, only, you can only play each game as they come, and people start saying, well, they've peaked too early, you've got them up too early, and you can only prepare a team for each game as it comes. And, and whilst we lost games after that, we were never really not... We never lost games, we never thrashed. We were always in it, and there was reasons, I guess, that we did. And all you can do is persevere with your, with your, your overall game plan or... And, and try and establish the right balance. And obviously, getting Alan Stringer back and Tony Hall back was a big plus as well. So 
but it does get back to that week by week thing if you can prepare every week <laughs> sorry my son <laughs> if you can prepare every week as it comes and take every game as it comes you win enough of them to get into a final series well, good luck for three in a row next week thank you Graham. thanks jerry no doubt about chad corns is there he knows when the cameras are on him well, uh, next week, of course, North and Glenelg for the third year running, and uh, Darrell, on today's form, those bays are going to be hard to toss again. Yes, they've got that ability to come back when it really counts. They were under pressure at ha up until half-time. wasn't a fantastic game. It's as good a prelim final as you'll see, and the finals hardened Glenelg's side stuck with their plan. Amazing when you think about it. Uh, they were inaccurate in the first half. Three goals, 13 at one stage, but then they slipped into second gear. No worries. Yes, they seem to win the centre square. Kerry and uh, Alan Stringer going to centre half forward at half time was another coaching coup by Graham Corns. Uh, not the most, a lot of height with uh, Alan Stringer, but he was aggressive. That attack at John Hall, full frontal, the biggest man on the field, and he took him down and Glenelg kicked a goal. Yeah, that was a beauty. The other tackle of the match, of course, uh, occurred late in the game. We just saw it on the highlights there with uh, Jeff Winton bringing McIntosh down. I don't think mm. McIntosh knew he was coming. No, blind side, real rugby league term or soccer term, came from behind, uh, out of Macca's vision, put him down. He did it also with Michael Aish too. But what must be noted is the run of the player and the inspiration to teammates. That's what club spirit is really built upon and Jeff Winton's a really good club man. And finally, one of the, the best players of the final series, I suppose, the drive they get from half-back, Michael Murphy. Yes, the Irishman from the Riverland, superb. He's worked his way into that position of prominence at Glenelg over a period of years, was a forward, now a wonderful defender, and he was unbeaten today. OK, well, the season has now come to an end for the Red Legs, so now let's hear from their coach, Neil Barr. Neil, a disappointing end to 1987, but you got out of the blocks well in the first quarter today, even though you lost the toss. Uh, yeah, I thought we were pretty good early, and we missed a couple of easy goals, and um, we probably should have been more up, but then to get in that position and, and fall away was very disappointing. I think some of our guys just didn't stand up under pressure, made too many mistakes. Well, the second term was perhaps where it was lost. Took you 23 minutes to get the one and only goal for the quarter with the breeze. Yeah, I, th I thought we'd uh, probably forge ahead in that second quarter, but uh, we just couldn't look like uh, kicking a goal at all. And, and then um, after half time, I thought we had the ball for a while and kicked it to them for the three or four times when we were going forward. And then they ran over the top of us, and then to our credit, we got back into it. But when the, uh, the last quarter started, when the, the really tough footy had to be played, I think we again started making errors and just didn't stand up at all. Well, perhaps it was the mistakes early in the third term when, in, in fact, your forward line had been pulled right down ground and you were kicking to the opposition. Yeah, well, that's what it was. I don't think we were kicking well, but we probably weren't uh, giving a lot of options either. It's a little hard to tell from, from the boundary, but we just weren't playing a, a cohesive footy at all. And you clam it off the floor, 30 points down there at one stage to get back by 10. Did you still think you had a chance at the last change? Well, you always have, um, and it really just needed our blokes to really stand up and say, well, we want to have a go at this and we want to play next week. But the disappointing thing is that you know, we didn't, and they did. I thought they were very strong in their attack of the ball, and uh, we were just a little bit soft, and only one team would get through, and but I'll certainly deserve to today. On reflection of 1987, you'd have to be pretty satisfied with your effort to get third. Oh, you probably asked me that in a couple of weeks. I think once, once you set yourself for a preliminary final and, um, and you look at it man for man and you reckon you've got a reasonable chance, and to, to capitulate the way we did is very disappointing and very hard to accept. But, you know, again, in a couple of weeks' time, we, we can look at it and see what, what we have achieved this year. And I guess in some ways we've achieved something, but very hard to see that at the moment. It's well, bad luck. It's been a good season, and thanks for all your help during the year. Thanks, Jerry. Yeah, yeah it's disappointing to get so close, but so far. But uh, really, you think at the start of the season, they'd lost Gallagher, Winter, uh, also uh, Roberts and mm. Hine and Thomas. So, gee, it's been a bit of a rebuilding year for them. Yes, they've done very well. I don't know if you remember that uh, Coach Neil Barham was very aggressive at the end of the finals last year. He felt he'd been let down. And then the players retired. And this year, he's found the lights of McNeil, Rowe, Richardson, Clayby. Sampson, Tanner's had his second season, the Maynard boys have done well in their second season, so I agree with Jerry, an old Norwood player, they've done well. Nonetheless, he was pretty concerned about that second half fade out today. Yes, it's interesting to know the impact that perhaps the flu and the hot weather had upon Norwood. Uh, they had injuries to Tanner, Fosdyke, and Conley, of course, Stephen Conley lasted on the ground 30 seconds. And very briefly, next year they'll lose Kelly, so I guess they'll be looking for a key forward. They'll lose Kelly.
Well, 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 I understand. I understand he's off to Collingwood. Well, we'll see. Yes, they won't. Norwood never lose players easily. Uh, Norwood, not to be underestimated ever, a very strong club. In case you've just joined us, repeating the final score in today's preliminary final, Glenelg far superior in the second half, winning by 46 points and earning a spot in the grand final. In the reserves, and a, an 11-point victory to Woodville after training, trailing Glenelg by three goals at half-time. So next Saturday, the grand finals, and we've got for the third year in a row, North Adelaide against Glenelg, and in the, cent in the reserves, it's the new chums of the competition, Central District and Woodville. So one of those teams will come away with the premiership, which is good for the competition. Well, Darrell, um, North Adelaide and Glenelg once again, are uh, we in for a repeat of uh, the scenario we've had for the past two years? Well, we'll see, won't we? There'll be some nervous Nor North Adelaide uh, players when they think about this year. The scribes, the experts will all come up with all those scenarios that you predict. Uh, will they get the collie wobbles? And it's important that they win this year. But uh, it'll be tight. Well, turn the clock back 12 months. Last year we thought North would have learned a lot of lessons from 1985. Apparently they hadn't. Do you think they have now? Well, they've changed the structure of their side with Roberts and Slattery and Trigg and players like that, uh, Burton. They, they're tougher and they're more defensive. I think that's uh, Coach Noonan uh, takes some credit. He's worked on the defensive action of North Adelaide and I think they're a better side and he is a coach is a better coach. He's, he has a contingency plan now if things go wrong. What about Glenelg? Are, are they as good as they have been? I don't think they're quite as good as they were in the last two years. It's a bit hard to know. Uh, they've done, they've worked miracles too with the likes of James West and players like that who are, are young, inexperienced, but it will be a ripper. Yes, it certainly will. We're now just six days away from the very reason the game's played. That's the grand final. And we'll be bringing it to you and, in fact, every, all right throughout Australia, live on ABC television starting at 2 o'clock. I look forward to your company then. Good night. Towards half forward, up high was West, and also there was Maynard. Play on the call from umpire Kinnear. Maynard thought he had it. He gave it out wide to Stanlon. High. Knocked away by West. Ducker. Oh, he didn't knock it away. Good mark, Ducker. The fist came in from the defender, but in front, young Mark Ducker did it well. Ross Gibbs trying to give the lead. Tony Hall over the top, the beautiful grab. Brilliant by Tony Hall. He's doing his utmost, working way down on the fence to get kicks. Inside half forward, Hall gets up high. Great mark, Tony Hall. Drops the ride nicely over the top of Scanlon and a good, strong grip of the ball. McIntosh chipping up, looking for Rowe. Grenbold in position. And it might get a 15-metre penalty for that lot. And Grenbold taken up to half-forward left. Wyndham the kick. And Glenelg forward once more. Back there, Scanlon. Oh! Scanlon struck Rowe's front man. Scanlon it is, but it's Maynard's mark. Dropping back, held position well. Ready first. And what a game. The bounce for Glenelg, McDermott playing a boomer quarter, drives deep, Kidney sets, Scanlon spoils the mark for Kidney. Stood his ground courageously. Yeah, but I think he'd be pretty happy with the way things have gone in the last 10 minutes. Murphy! Oh, this game has come alive, or at least the Bays have come alive. Drives long, direct to the square, Pellier and Seymour! Absolute beauty!